in Tebeni. And we are together working to bring the, trying to bring the quality of education that we are offering at a private school um, to a wider audience in Uganda because there's a great need. Um, I'm Bea Odermatt, uh, her father. I've been working in educational, uh, in education in Africa for about 30 years. I started in Ethiopia way back in 1979. I have a, a wide variety of experiences working with uh, NGOs, uh, church organizations, setting up uh, schools in uh, Kenya, Uganda, uh, South Sudan. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I have a heart for education. And uh, like Miriam said, uh, we would like to see the things that we know and the things that we, that we are capable of doing going to a wider audience. And today is an effort to get information and help from uh, the open education community in seeing how we could do that effectively. All right. So um, we're going to start out with talking about basically the situation as it exists in Uganda. Uh, so Uganda, like many sub-Saharan African countries, has huge issues related to um, how education is offered. Um, there is uh, preschool is almost non-existent for children. Um, primary attendance is uh, mandatory, but not at a high level of quality. Uh, and of course, that's not a surprise when you consider the fact that 47% um, of the Ugandan population is between the age of zero and 14 years old. Um, so almost half of the population in this country is under 14 years and under. Um, this creates huge challenges for education and anything that can be done to make education affordable is of course critically important for a country that already is lacking in resources but then additionally has so many children that it has to educate. Um, so because of the way situations occur in, in Uganda, uh, teacher absenteeism is very high. It's incredibly hard being a teacher here. You can imagine the size of classes we have, and we'll talk more about that later. But 60% um, of teachers frequently just don't even come to school to teach their classes. Um, so this is an example of uh, a classroom. Um, they're obviously all smiling and wonderful. Uh, there's 31 kids in this photo and it's not even close to the entire classroom. Um, so one in four children, only one in four children finish primary school education. Uh, so as they progress up through levels, fewer and fewer of them um, finish. Uh, only about 24% of adolescents actually enroll into secondary school education. And there's a lot of reasons for why that happens. Um, for one thing, children with any kind of disability are frequently excluded from school uh, because there's no special needs teachers, there's no facilities. Um, and then the ability to actually um, integrate these children uh, is severely lacking because teachers just don't know how to, to integrate children with special needs into the classroom. Um, additional challenges in the school environment is lack of toilets and washing areas. Sexual abuse is very common. Uh, close to a quarter of Uganda children at point report sexual abuse in schools. Um, and then the way discipline is enforced is through caning and physical punishments, uh, which means that school is just generally not, not an enjoyable environment. So there are three major areas that Ugandan schools have issues. One is lack of quality resources and methodology. Uh, teaching methodology in Uganda is very much the old style colonial, you sit, you memorize what I told you, and you reproduce the thing you've memorized on the examination. Uh, there are very few resources in the classroom. Um, the, <laughs> the curriculum is fact-based, but not in a, a good way. And this is what you should learn and anything that doesn't exist in the specific fact that I'm teaching you isn't relevant. Uh, it's very rigid, very structured. Students are not asked to discover or learn or figure out about the world. They're just asked to memorize. 
So school is therefore obviously not enjoyable. This isn't something that you would choose to do. It's, it's not a pleasant experience to be in school for the majority of Ugandan students. Uh, the second issue is that teachers themselves have challenges beyond um, the, the curriculum itself. Uh, the first challenge is that teaching is not actually considered an honorable profession. You do teaching if you can't do something else, uh, which means that the teachers are often the lowest common denominator. You've done enough um, that you actually can get to university, but you're not a good enough student that you do the other more honorable type of um, degrees, which means the quality of teachers can be very low. Though obviously there are very dedicated uh, teachers, um, we have many that are employed here at UCAN that are fantastic teachers and they have a real heart for children. It, unfortunately though, that's not the general uh, approach to teaching in the country. Um, so when you consider that a lot of teachers are not um, well trained, uh, then you also have issues of um, how they teach. So classrooms become just kind of rigid, sit and do what I tell you. Uh, we, have a, we have wonderful resources or places in Uganda where children can go and learn and discover things like the zoo. But when you see uh, Ugandan school children at the zoo, um, they don't ask questions. They do what they're told. They walk around and they get um, people, uh, the zoo person who's showing them around will, will give them uh, a tour and tell them things, but then the children will just absorb it. They'll write down whatever they think they're supposed to write down, uh, but they're not curious, or maybe they are curious, but they've been discouraged from asking questions, so they just stand there. Um, when, when you see children who aren't in that kind of education system at the zoo, uh, the, the difference is so stark, the, the way that children interact and ask questions versus just stand there and, and do what they're told. Um, teacher pay is also very low. It's unreliable. Uh, it's very frequently we hear stories from teachers in the Ugandan system where they haven't received their pay for two or three months, uh, which means that a lot of teachers have secondary jobs that they're doing instead of teaching because that's how they can afford to live because they're not actually receiving pay for the work that they're doing. Uh, and then the last um, challenge teachers have is massive class sizes with 60 or more students uh, cramped into spaces that um, you shouldn't have that many kids in them. And of course, you can't uh, individually give attention to students. You can't help them develop. Uh, if you have that many students, you just don't have time. Uh, and then the third issue is students are passive participants, and I've already talked a lot about this. They, they just do the work that they've been assigned uh, rather than asking questions. In fact, questions are frequently seem to be discouraged because teachers are afraid they won't be able to answer those questions, so they don't want to hear questions at all. So our vision is that OER can make a difference. Uh, and we'd like to see if we can implement it. We're very new to the OER, to OER and we, um, we'd like to see how we can use that here in Uganda to help make a difference. Um, so our proposal is that we would establish a learning center. Uh, the center would train and mentor teachers and administrators. It would create an OER library that could be used offline. Uh, that's very important because um, challenges with resources uh, or sorry, with internet speeds and um, bandwidth mean that we could, and also the cost of internet means we need to be offline. Uh, we would carry out curriculum integration where we have a curriculum developed that teachers can be used, uh, can be used, um, develop resources uh, and liaise with government agencies and authorities because obviously this needs to be integrated into um, the system that's already in place here. Um, so the, the first step, of course, is training administrators. We need to work top, top down uh, to make this happen. Um, and we need passionate people that are very interested in education. This here is um, the easiest and the hardest. Finding people who are passionate about making education happen here in Uganda is actually not hard. There are many people who are very dedicated to wanting to create a better system, but they need training. Uh, and that's where the challenges come in, is to provide the training and expertise needed so that they can be effective leaders. Um, and then I just, I really like this quote because it, it says how, it, it defines how it is that we are trying to approach education. Uh, then the second one is training teachers. 
uh, as we've already discussed, there's huge issues with how teaching has um, occurred uh, or teacher training has occurred and the kind of individuals who um, are often brought into education because they don't have a lot of other options. So this is um, probably one of the most challenging aspects of this uh, is to retrain teachers, retrain thought processes to help um, get teachers on board in, in ways that are really positive to give them the skills they need to make this happen. Uh, we can have all the most amazing resources um, and the affordable resources through OER, but we need to be able to train teachers in order to use those resources effectively. So basically um, what we're looking at is we need a mentor. We need someone to help us navigate OER, find resources that will help us um, be, get where we need to go. And that's um, part of the point of this presentation is to try and, and find a way forward uh, where we can implement this idea that we have. Uh, and then the third, the third thing is hands-on material. Um, uh, since we're at a primary and secondary level, we need to be able to develop resources that are going to be there. Uh, they need to be affordable. They need to be um, easy to make because we'd like to make them in country. Uh, we, need, we would like to be able to have a lot of these things to make learning more fun, more hands-on for the students involved. Um, thank you, Miriam. <laughs> so the challenges we have uh, when it comes to actually using uh, the resources from OER, the, the many wonderful things that are out there uh, that are being used uh, in, in other parts of the world uh, are not easily used here for a number of reasons. Uh, there is a lack of computers, printers, audiovisual um, uh, equipment. Uh, one of the big challenges is uh, low bandwidth. Uh, so, you know, even if, even if there was an, a, an affordable way of getting or a way to get on the internet, often the bandwidth is so poor that things uh, just drop out along the way. Internet is quite expensive. Um, the internet connection <coughs> we have for the school, which isn't fantastic, is costing us over $300 a month. Um, and then there's a lack of skilled personnel to, to um, uh, uh, take care of the hardware and software. Um, so it's it's a it's a real challenge to figure out a way to to make things work. So we have come up with an idea of a proposed uh, way of doing things, and that is that rather than try to uh, operate uh, off the internet on a daily basis, is that we actually set up a server uh, at each participating school. And that the learning center would take, would make the downloads, organize material, curate material, and then that material would be put on the local server. And then the local server uh, in that in that school, uh, in a particular school, uh, the local server then would there would be uh, screens in each classroom, and so the teacher could use the material that is stored locally uh, without having to worry about internet. The other thing is. Uh, that server can have a small battery backup so that, uh, again, we don't end up with the issue of power going off because that's another big issue here. Uh, we regularly lose uh, the power so that maybe we've gone for two or three hours. So the idea is to have a local server running within the school. Um, and so uh, I think I've covered much of this. Uh, the other thing that, of course, we need to do is we need to work with the Ministry of Education, and we have a good rapport with the ministry uh, so that we can set up some model schools uh, that would show how this would work. Now, the big challenge in all of this is the financial side. Um, we don't, we have, a, we have a good vision, but we don't have a lot of financial resources. This is always a huge challenge. Uh, to find how we're going to do that. And so uh, we are looking for suggestions from the people in the uh, open education community as to how we could uh, set up uh, five pilot schools uh, 
uh, where the finance, if there is any way that the finances could be found for something of this nature. And of course, collaboration. Um, we want to collaborate. Uh, we need to collaborate. The, the great thing about uh, this, um, this last four or five days is we have learned so much. Uh, we came into this as babies and you probably recognize this from our presentation that we are still just learning uh, how all of this works. And uh, we've already received uh, emails from a number of presenters who are interested in guiding us and leading us. And we want to thank you for that. And uh, I think we have time for a few questions or comments. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, interesting overview, and, uh, and and we are here to help. I would say uh, I think that's that's all part of, of this conference and this community to share best practices and to help each other. In the chat, I already shared uh, the link to the Open Education for a Better World uh, mentoring program that might be of interest for you. Um, I, I do. Uh, so a question and a, uh, from Matilda, your objectives are very noble. How do you keep motivated given the uh, dire uh, circumstances? We love kids, we love education. That's, we love this. This is, this is our life. This is who we are and this is what we do. And I would just add to that, that um, what we do currently with our school is we, we bring in uh, students um, that are from low income. We can't bring a lot in. We bring in what we can uh, based on um, the income of the school, which is not much. Um, but we uh, and seeing seeing what we can do for these these kids that um, you know some people might write off because they haven't had the opportunities uh, is just amazing, and that helps motivate. Yeah, we right. we 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 also within the school we we have a heart for children with learning disabilities. So we on an ongoing basis we also we're also there. We we just love we just love education. <laughs> that's that's what it's about. That's that's great. And uh, and then uh, yeah, Bea adds uh, we're also learning from you. Uh, so uh, that's uh, I think also very interesting. So thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, Please stop the recording.